she calls it black girl love, and I see bare ebony feet dredging through red clay, dust coating her full lips and, and sweat kissing her forehead. She calls it black girl love, and I'm taken back to my first time, pain coupled with pleasure licking the lines of uncertainty. She calls it black girl love, and I become consumed by the sway of her hips, the way her split smells, eight hours of being there, trembling fingers fighting to go through gates they are told not to go. She calls it black girl love. And I see myself in her arms, nestled against her breast, whirling my fingers through her locks and, and masturbating to the rhythm of her breath. She calls it black girl love, and I find myself naked, exposed, shredding my costume, removing my mask, slipping into my weakness and embracing my ugliness. She calls it black girl love, and I relinquish my will to fight. I surrender my heart. I, I talk in my real voice, and I pick up my pen. She calls it black girl love. Innocent, sweet, pure, salty. She calls it black girl love. I just call it love. She came over last night seeking conversation of an intellectual nature. She actually said that. <laughs> Hello? I'm here for conversation of an intellectual nature. <laughs> I brought one. Are you going to let me in, or? You're here, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, you're just going to go touch it on my stuff? Where's the point <laughs> uh, Second row from the sink. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, uh, what do you want to watch? I don't know. What do you want to watch? I asked you first. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm here for conversation. Remember? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's on your mind? IDK. I'm actually trying not to think about the news right now. <laughs> Girl, you're the one who just said you wanted a conversation of an intellectual. Yeah, nature. I know, I know. Okay, shut up. <laughs> I just read something for this class I'm taking that talked about how when we assume that black queer women are the only ones having sex worth creating discourse about, we place the burden of sexuality studies on all black queer women. And like, I never thought of that before. <laughs> and like, it makes so much sense, you know. But it's also so surprising to hear because. About straight women, but whenever I read stuff about sex, it really is always about queer sex. Uh huh. Anyway, it's a weird kind of thought, you know, because I feel like it's a super slippery slope where if we acknowledge the fact that we don't talk about black middle class straight women and their sexuality as a part of our feminism, then like, what if they become all that we talk about? And like, don't we talk about straight people enough? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, she smelled intoxicating as hell. But at the same time, I do care, you know? Whenever I talk to my mom about gender study stuff, I can tell that it has, like, awakened something in her, and she's getting to talk about shit with me that she's never been able to talk about before, and, like, that's important, right? Like, I want my mom to be able to talk about gender study stuff and sexuality stuff and all that stuff. <laughs> what? Why are you touching my stuff? <laughs> You're such a Taurus! <laughs> Legs are 
spread wide open, so I hum. Mmm. Okay. Love. What? The book. Oh. Yeah, it, it's a good one. Do you have any suggestions from your library that I can borrow? I'm wanting to read something that's not required. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you like Toni Morrison, what else would you like? Have you read God Help the Child? Yeah. There's something about silence being as close to music as you can get. That should make me get my own apartment, to be honest. I feel you. I like having my own space. You know, tourist shit. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read Mia McKenzie's joint from like 2013? What's it called? Um, mm, Somewhere We Got Free. No, no, I haven't read it yet. Even though I'm pretty sure I bought it on Kindle right when it came out. Well, you should borrow my copy. Uh, tell me what you think. Okay. Thanks. You have nice hands. Thank you. You have good books, too. <laughs> uh, books are important. Uh, John Waters, you know the crazy ass white dude who made his <laughs> <laughs> Her mouth was warm, and we fit together perfectly. She moved with me. <laughs> so, uh, did you still need that intellectual conversation, or was a physical one okay? Oh my god, I can't stand you. <laughs> Sleep with me. 
Good. I will come up with three nights a week. Oh, can we make it two? I think you're great. My uh, cats just get really upset when another woman shows up in bed. <laughs> okay. I will come over two nights a week, and you will change the sheets before I get there so I don't get I mean, obviously, I have home training. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll come to your place twice a week? Perfect. We're just sleeping buddies. Just sleeping. I, I get a better night's rest when someone else is in the bed. Yeah, same. Is it just to keep our heat bills low and to help us get those eight hours? Nothing more. Nothing less. You're just friends. Not attracted to each other. I mean, she's thicker than what I go for, typically. You couldn't handle me anyways, all them skinny ass girls you date. <laughs> it was a perfect, simple, beautiful plan. Then it got complicated. Her skin was so soft. She had this patch on the right side below her 10th rib above her pelvic something. I noticed it when we were spooning. I was the big spoon. She sleeps better when we're spooning. No, I don't mind sleeping together. In fact, I prefer it. Plus, she always smells like this right out of the shower smell, you know? Like dove soap and coconut oil. Plus a little bit of rosemary, maybe? <laughs> At night, her bonnet would fall in front of my face and that clean herbal scent always overwhelmed me. I was afraid my hands, my hands would stray. When we were spooning, my hands would travel from the front of my thigh to the back of hers. I don't know, thinking about her. Her smell lingered on me all day, even after I showered in the morning. Her scent would be stuck in my nostrils. Traces of her I hadn't noticed before. Hello? How's your fuck buddy? How's that bitch? Oh. <laughs> Or text and let me know when and where. 
and I will see you there. Great. Thank you. Marie, hey, this is D. We're going to meet at the spot in about 30 minutes. Hope to see you there. Okay, okay. I will see you then. Okay. What's that about? Okay. I just invited somebody I met at the graduation. Please be chill. I think she's fam. Now you know you can't just say that without giving no details, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> is she cute? Is she single? What's her name? Oh, she's very cute. And her name is Bree. And I don't know if she's single or not. We like just met. Bree? Bree? Like the Bree we've been trying to tell you about? Bree, what? Light skin Bree. With those braids and that Bastiat tattoo. <laughs> 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 well, thank you for inviting me. Should have done it sooner, apparently. <laughs> January 7th. Dear Diary. I saw her today, and she still has that walk that I love. She looked happy, too, unlike the last time I saw her. I hope she forgives me for that. I, I was going through some things, and I didn't mean to take my problems out on her. Maybe I should just send her an email to say hi, let her know that I saw her. I wonder if she's changed her email and phone number. I wonder if she's moved. January 12th, she wrote me back. I can't believe she wrote me back. She said next time I should stop her and speak. Maybe I should go back by there tomorrow. Oh, she hasn't been back by in the last three days. I wrote her back and I mentioned, I'm not dating anyone. I want to be better. January 17th. It's been five days and she still hasn't responded to my email. I mean, maybe I should worry and she does have a life, right? Maybe she's dating someone new. She was smiling with that girl she was walking with. No, she was telling me if she was dating someone new. I told her I wasn't dating anyone. Maybe she's sick. <laughs> That's probably what it is, is that she's sick. But she's probably all alone without anyone to help her feel better. I'm going to take her some get well goodies, you know, like some soup, some crackers, a magazine. Maybe I should call first. No. <laughs> Surprising her is going to be best. <laughs> January 18th. I still haven't heard back from her and I'm starting to get worried. I called the hospital and the police department. <laughs> I even called her mother, but she hung up on me. <laughs> Doesn't she know that I'm worried about her daughter? I mean, yes, I messed up and I apologize, but her family can't stop me from loving her. She forgave me and she told me next time I see her to speak and she replied back to my email. I just need her to call me and let me know everything's okay. I'm just trying to love her. January 20th. I can't believe she still hasn't called me. I went out of my way, took medicine and food by her house. I even left a note to let her know it was me. You'd think she'd at least call to say thank you. So, I called her all this morning and three times last night. No one answered. So I drove by her house last night, rang the doorbell, stood in the cold rain for 30 minutes, and no one answered the door. Where was she? I don't know why she wants to play these games. She knows that I love her, and I'm sorry. I've changed. I even, I even got my old job back on a trial basis, but I know I'll make it. I just need her to call me, let me know she's okay. January 24th, I love, I love her. her. <laughs> I, love I love her. her. I love, I love her. her. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. She called me back, finally. She said she got my care package, my voicemail, my emails. Apparently she was out of town. I mean, I'm glad she wasn't sick or anything, but she was still rude. She even ignored me while she was at home. I saw her moving around her house. I even watched over her while she slept. I've left her hundreds of cards this week. I even left a beautiful handmade one on her pillow today. I made a photo album filled with pictures from back when we were happy, before I let my problems mess us up. And after all that, she still told me not to contact her anymore. I would have done more, but I broke. They fired me for missing days, 
because I was worried about her being sick. She made me lose my job, but that's okay. She'll make it up to me when we are together. I'll do all the cooking and cleaning while she's at work, and we'll have a perfect house with kids and a dog. She's allergic to cats. January 25th. I, I love, love her. <laughs> I don't understand why she can't understand that. I mean, I tried to explain, but she just wouldn't listen. She just would not listen to me. And I only held her down so she would just shut up and listen to what I was trying to say. She started screaming and hollering at me, so I had to do something to calm her down. So I hit her, you know, like they do in the movies. <laughs> Except it didn't work. She kept, like, screaming and hollering at me. She kept screaming at me. Why does she want me to leave? I was only trying to love her. I kept covering her face, hoping that she would just be quiet for one second. Enough time to let me talk. Enough time for me to show her how much I love her. All the handwritten cards I wrote for her, all the roses I picked for her, all the pictures I took of her smiling and laughing with others, never with me, never with me. Now she wants to cry and tell me to leave. I can't do that. And she knows that. She's mine forever. I kept covering her face, even after she stopped moving and I heard nothing from her. No more pleading for me to stop. No more asking me to leave. I kept my hands there just long enough for her to listen to what I was trying to tell her. And then I just got too tired and, and I had to rest. She was already asleep, <laughs> laying beside me like it should always be. I put my arms around her, waiting. Waiting for her to wake up so we could be together forever. I hope, I hope she, she knows. knows. I'm, I'm just, just trying, trying to love her. Dinner that night. Mm -hmm. Purple. 
You wore purple the first time I met you, and then you wore it at dinner. Oh, so you did like my shirt? No. <laughs> I just knew I couldn't get you or that color out of my mind until I got you out of it.
she wants me to mentally fuck her pain away. Pretend we more than just a two night stand memories of And I'm not a wound licker. Dry blood clot tender. So I pass this time while explaining why as she puts me once again on the sidelines of her life, catching drip drops of her. <sighs> She's starting to bore me. And the, and the hunger in me isn't being fed. I mean, mental rumbles echoing in a space long ago occupied by her. So why even bother standing on the sidelines, front lines of her life? It isn't something that interests me anymore. And did I mention I'm bored? Or, or, or should I stress, we've been here before easing pain with band-aids of fake love, fake want, fake wetness seeping from pens of invisible ink and she says, she says I understand her like no other. I say, she misunderstands me like no other. Pretending <laughs> we friends till silence finds us again. Time passes again and we part once again. I'm hungry. She feeds me no more. <laughs> I met a new friend. A new friend? Yeah. When did you meet her and why am I just now hearing about it? She dropped me a line a few weeks ago on Facebook. Said she'd seen me before out and about. Uh, honestly, uh, okay, we've been talking a little bit more recently and she wants to hang up sometimes. I, I wouldn't have even responded. But I, I'm tired of sitting alone at home each night and, and, and like I said, we're just friends. Okay, so when are you hanging out with this new friend? This weekend. We're gonna check out that new sushi place that I mentioned to you. You know, the one that I asked you to go to. So you're just deciding to tell me about it? I didn't have to tell you at all. It's not like you care what I do on the weekends anyway. As long as I'm there when you catch five minutes away from her. How can you say that? You know I work hard to spend more than just five minutes with you on the weekends. Yeah, on the damn phone. We've been doing this for like six months now, and I, and I just started getting calls from you on the weekend last month. And, and once again, that's when she's not around. I'm tired of this. I'm sorry, you're right. You shouldn't be alone, and you shouldn't have to spend the weekends by yourself. I'm sorry I put you through this. I'm sorry I'm too fucking scared to just break up with her. I, I do wanna be with you. I, I, can't, I can't love you enough to give you up. I'm sorry that this new friend can give you what you need, something that I want to give you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. I love myself enough to let you go. I need more, D. I'll break up with her tonight. <sighs> okay. Okay, I I'll meet you on 5th uh, in about an hour, maybe two, depending on how this goes. Okay, I'll meet you there. Don't disappoint me, D. Okay. D! Babe! <laughs> Can you help me with something? Okay, I'll be right there. Wait a sec.
You're so good at it, baby. Thank you. What kind of cake did you make? Funfetti. From the box. So like I said, don't get too excited. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, unfortunately, I have a meeting to go to downtown. Um, at 8.30 on a Tuesday? Mm. You better not be cheating on me. I don't know. Why would you say that? Babe, it was just a joke. What? What's, what, what's wrong? Why are you crying? We need to talk. Yeah, talk about what? I'm done. You're done with what? I'm done with this. With this, this half-assed relationship. This pretending that we still care when we both know we don't. We're just existing. And I'm tired of existing with you. I want more from life. I deserve more from life, so I'm done. I'm, I'm in love. I met her months ago. <coughs> We've been talking, falling in love. And she wants us to be together. Okay. She, she deserves better. I deserve better. And, and I'm, I'm ready to give her all of me. Okay. Besides, I, I didn't even think you would notice whether or not I was here. I mean, we're barely, we're barely existing together. We wake up, go to sleep, just out of routine. We don't even want to be, I, I don't even remember, I didn't remember our anniversary. I don't remember the last real kiss we shared. We haven't, we don't even touch. Like the last time we touched was passing in the bathroom. We haven't had sex in months. Okay. I mean, I, I want to get to know someone. I want to have hugs no, someone. I said okay, damn it. Shut up. <laughs> you want out? Fuck it. Fine. Just get your shit and go. Just please stop with the bullshit about you being in love with another woman. You think you're special? Because you found someone else to love instead of working on us? What? You want a damn cookie or something for wanting more? I gave you more. But you selfish ass couldn't see that. So fuck you and the new chick. <laughs> I wish I well in dealing with you and your nobody ways. So putting yourself first by switching jobs every six months because they don't understand you. Would it have killed you to wash a damn dish once or twice in seven years? <laughs> Pay a fucking life bill without me begging first? You ever think that, that I was tired of trying to cover us and all of our bills while you found yourself and your calling? No? <laughs> I've got a calling for you. It's called being grown. <laughs> you in the back of my throat. I tried to erase it. 
fingers pushed in till I gag, still not reach. Drinking from your well is something I can no longer do. Still thirsty from the last time as we tried. Me harder, I think, to grow my love, to see yours. The ground has grown dry, barren, and fertile as we pretend. Pretend that life is right and that we are doing right by being here. Time passes as the me passes for you, for us. Cravings no longer reach for in your arms. I'm passing on that hit this time. Why? Because. Because it's not a fucking answer, Kai. What the fuck? Okay. No, I want an answer and I deserve it now. D, we've talked about this before. There's no easy answer. Fuck that. It's, it's just, it's time. It, it's time to end this shit. I mean, we, we've been here before. You, you, you've changed and, and I did not sign up for this. Oh, so it's my fault? You know what? I I'm coming over. Where is she? I told you on the phone she wasn't here. Where is she? You fucking her. Why isn't she here on a Saturday night with my girlfriend? She's not here because I didn't invite her. You invited her here all the other times you were fucking her. The other times you would start arguments with me to keep me away from here? To keep me away from you? What do you want me to say? Yes. I invited her. Yes, I fucked her. But you know that already, so why are you here? I'm here to stare the bitch in the face who cheated on me. That's why I'm here. So I'm a bitch now? I'm the same bitch that carried your ass for six months when you didn't have a job. I'm the same bitch that's been dealing with you, trying to figure out if you're a lesbian or some other shit for the last year. I mean, what the fuck is genderqueer anyway? <laughs> but you know what? I'm also the same bitch that knows your sorry ass cheated on me with my so-called best friend. So I'll be that bitch. But what should I call you? What do you call a bitch with no gender? Every day I try my best to show up. And I have my shit to work on. 
But to keep it completely honest, you knew that. I'm doing the best that I can. Hey, oh my God. See, this is the shit that blows my mind about you. Do you really think that I'm not trying my best or are you just being petty right now? Look, I'm being upfront about my feelings. I I'm telling you honestly what's on my mind and heart and I'm still showing up for you. I don't even understand how you can ask me if I'm really trying. Because it's about actions, Kai. Not just saying and trying. You have to do. You have to be proactive in your life and what you want in this life and what you're willing to do to do get to it. <laughs> and it seems like, quite frankly, in this relationship and other aspects of your life, you're not even doing that. So yeah, I'm asking you if you're even trying. Look, Kai, I'm not calling you a liar. I'm not. I'm just saying you need to take a look at yourself and see why it is that you actually resist closeness and growth. How many times have you set expectations for yourself and you didn't make it because you didn't put in the work? How many times have I reached out to you and, and you close yourself off on me or you get agitated when I check in? You talk big talk. But are you integrating any of that in your life? In ours? Yeah. Staying and, and, and trying isn't working anymore. You have to do. And yes, there are things I need from you, but you have to do it for yourself first. You're right. And everything you just said, I can't deny it. I literally just said I have my shit to work on. Great. I'm not proud of who I am. I, I don't like the fact that I have communication blocks and issues with consistency. Hell, at this point, I can barely keep a promise to myself. I'm not used to being just connected with someone. Do you even want to be? What? We have one argument and you're ready to call it off? Listen, I need to know where we stand in this. I'm not trying to have you break my heart. But I don't know what's going to happen, Bree. I, yes, I like you right now. And, and I want to be with you. But I, I cannot predict the future. I want to be in this. I'm in this. Oh, damn it. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for yelling. <laughs> My clients yell enough to last us seven years. I'm sorry, too. I, I, I can communicate better. I'm trying, but I can try harder. You absolutely could. Man. <laughs> Chill. Listen, and also, also, I'm not one of your little friends. Man, bro. These are not nicknames I consented to. <laughs> All right, shawty. <laughs> so we good? Yes. I like you a lot, Kai. I do. And I love showing that. Sometimes I like the same thing, too. Dude, I feel you, and I can do that. But I need you to give me a little more time and space to deal with shit on my own before I bring shit to you. I want to share, but, you know, sometimes it's like your mind goes 10 miles a minute, and, and you're so stressed about something that I just processed. So, baby, like, I mean this in a loving way. Sometimes you got to chill. I don't know. Just slow down. I'm right here. No, no, this has to be spoken face to face. I didn't ask for that. 
I didn't expect it and wasn't surprised when it didn't happen. The letter or the apology. She promised me the sun, moon, and stars and de delivered me to the hospital ER more than once. I accepted it as my worth. I accepted that I needed to love her more, accept her better. I tried. I tried to anticipate what would make her happy, sad, but most of all mad. I remember the first time we fought. It was a simple push, really, after I said something that she didn't like. We were both surprised by her reaction. I apologized. She apologized. And I, I took it as a one-off thing that it wouldn't happen again it until it did. The second time was a push again, followed by a slap. Again, we were both surprised. Me more than her. She apologized again, but she added that it was my fault and I needed to watch my mouth. I, mean, I slightly agreed. I mean, maybe if I shut up more, her hitting me wouldn't have happened. I believe that until the fourth or fifth time she hit me after she was having a bad day and I was standing in the way of the door. It was there to give her a hug. Instead, I got a shove and a punch in the stomach. I didn't greet her at the door anymore. I don't do much of anything anymore. We argued one night after I hung out with friends. I was 30 minutes late. She greeted me by grabbing my neck and dragging me through the house by my hair. She accused me of cheating and made me strip naked to smell her on me, she says. Then she took what I didn't want to give anymore. The part wasn't new. She normally wanted sex to enforce her point. I, I cut my hair. She told me that my mother was trying to separate us after she questioned us about the bruises and the weight loss. I told her that my mother loved me, loved her, loved us, and didn't want us apart. She disagreed. She beat me every time I visited my mother. I don't visit her anymore. We talk on the phone while I'm at work. I'm not allowed on the phone or the computer when we're home together. It took a while. You were bruises and broken bones before I realized that I can't do this anymore. She didn't believe me. She told me to sit my ass down, and before I could even open my mouth, she hit me in it. Making her mad was becoming easier and easier. I took the hit and the many that followed, the sex after. It made it easier. Easier to shoot her point blank in the head. <laughs> you know, TV and movies lie. The blood splatter wasn't that intense. Oh, well, that look she gave me, though? That was intense. She looks scared. And surprised! How many times did I look like that? Eyes and mouth wide open, wanting to say whatever I could to prevent what was to happen. It never worked for me, and it didn't work for her. I told her I no longer love you. I'm tired, tired, tired of loving you! You would never let us go! I almost asked her what was it about me that made her not love me enough! Then I stopped. And it was too late. It was too late for her. It was too late for us. That pool was gone from under the bed. Not how heavy my arm was with the weight of it. How cold it felt in my grasp. It, it was smart to put the bullets in early so I wouldn't chicken out. It's the simple things. To hook her up gently. A push on her shoulder and a kiss on her neck. It turned over. Busting and cussing. Swinging would have been next, but the gun stopped her. Free spring. It could have been, should have been so different for us. I pulled the trigger. She died. I put two bullets in, one for her and one for me. I didn't use mine. There really wasn't a need to anymore. <laughs> I didn't expect it. All my planning, I, I pictured that they would find us spread out here. Instead, they will just find her. I, I think I'm going to disappear for a while. Live life for the first time in a long time. And if they find me eventually, it can't be any worse than what she did to me. Mama will understand. Daddy beat her until she couldn't take it anymore. I guess blood tells.
hurtling in this fridge we built, not purchased. Winter approaching inside and out. Wrapping myself in blankets of you. But in the end, all I ever think about is you. I'll have some miso soup, <laughs> no tofu. Yakitori, really light on the onions. Do you have that gluten-free soy sauce? Yeah. Okay, let me get um, a go-go roll, extra masago sauce, and a glass of water. Okay. Oh wait, one pot of um, the matcha tea. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hurry up and decide on what you want. I am starving. Please. You know I always get the same thing here, so the only one holding you back is you. Uh -uh, you need to be more adventurous. Try a different side dish. Okay, are you buying? Ooh, no. Uh-huh, then shut it up and own it. You're so angry. <laughs> I missed you. Yeah, I missed you too, bud. You told me what's up. Ooh, hold on. Okay, one sec. Wear a skirt, no panties, and those heels that I like. Well... Waiter, water. Oh, more? <laughs> Thank you. So, how is she? Mm, she is fine. Better? Much better. How so? Well, I take the time to better explain what I wanted. Oh, really? And what is it that you want? Mm -hmm. Use your brain. Pain is pleasure. And that all of a sudden made everything better? No. But we talked some more, and then we did some more. Oh, the doing made everything better. Uh -huh. Can I watch? Girl, you know she's not gonna let you watch. She already thinks we are fucking when we do lunch. She's probably gonna smell my breath when I get home. Oh. Why should she be smelling your breath when she should be smelling mine? Okay. <laughs> Why is it that we always talk about sex? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Work's going well. Peggy says I might be up for a promotion. Oh, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I need that extra cash. I think I need new tires <laughs> on the car, and I can barely afford maintenance as is. Well, you will deserve it. Yeah, I know. I'm working hard. Do you know about when you're gonna get it? Nah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just gonna keep working. Okay. I'm doing my thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. You'll to take care of us. <laughs> <laughs> How was the food? I loved it. Oh, yeah. Where'd you find the restaurant? Because I know you didn't find it. It was Peggy. Mm, I knew it! <laughs> I'm gonna need her to find a really good brunch place because I don't want to wait. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm not waiting either. Safe word. Banana. Good girl. <laughs> Have you missed me? Yes. Good girl. You ready? Yes. Good. Grown folk shit. <laughs> About bending, scratching, biting, spanking, oh. <laughs> strapping, licking, eating, oh. <laughs> things like roses are red and nipples are meant to be bitten, and shit like when she smiles, the sun comes up, but when her ass is up, Hopefully the shades are down. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Late at night, when the dog's asleep and the cable bill ain't been paid and it's dark as fuck, we fuck. Slowly, naked, wetness seeping, sweat dripping, mm. oh. friction causing reactions, making fuck faces to the sounds of for only two payments of $19.99, this can be yours. <laughs> oh, we fuck. Poetic nonsense that only makes sense to her and I. You ready? Yes.
You decided to just up and leave with no call, no email, not even a fucking text message. You didn't tell me shit. All you wanted was your pussy aiming to be out before anyone noticed you in the morning, and I still tried. I thought that maybe our love could weather this storm, that we could make it work. Fuck, do you think you're the first person to realize that they weren't straight and to come out of the damn closet? <laughs> and yeah, my exes, they kept saying she wanted about shit, and I said, no, no, she's scared. So scared that you up and leave like the punk ass that they said you were. I begged your mother for your number! I drove to her house and your apartment until I thought they would call the cops on me. And no. Until I ran out of words to beg you. And nothing. And yet here you stand. Two years later, like nothing ever happened. Like you didn't just up and leave like the punk ass that you say you are, that you are. So yeah, I'm wearing my rainbow badge with pride. Here's a fuck you. fingers in my scalp. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> the next time you don't even attempt to dry your hair, you don't have to figure this shit out. You got it? Yes. Okay, good. Mm. Ooh. Do you want me to braid your hair? Uh, would you? Yeah, <laughs> turn around. Let me see. Let me see. Just a little one.
my scalp once again is <laughs> later on. Black girl love. love. 